up YouTube? Welcome to my 3.18 league start plans. Now I'm recording this video on the eve of the league start or the morning before the league start. So I'm going to quickly go over what my Atlas tree is, what I'm planning to do, and if you should copy it or not, and whether I think bossing is profitable. So like you can see in this, the league start plan is to get a perseverance, an interrogation, a goal with berserk enchant and mantra of flames, along with many other items, right? So what do we actually plan on doing? So the day one plan is to try to first figure out if Sentinel is worth doing. A lot of times the leak mechanic is pretty bad and it ends up wasting a lot of your time to do it. But I do think that Sentinel is pretty low maintenance. Like you pretty much just equip it to your character and press it three times a map. So it should be worth doing. But in previous leagues like Expedition, I wasted an insane amount of time because the leak mechanic turns out to be a huge, huge waste of time, right? And that's actually just the worst part because it makes you progress your atlas slower and it pretty much slows everything down. So you're slower to high tier maps, you're slower to do map bosses and stuff like that. Now, I also want to be using the Chaos Recipe Enhancer that I set up. As you can see, the Chaos Recipe Enhancer is something like this. What it does is it lets you put all your unidentified or identified items into a dump tab. And it will tell you how many more items you need for a set. And then it will highlight in red so you can take it out one by one items to make the Chaos Recipe. Now the Chaos Recipe is if you have a full set of identified or unidentified items so a full set includes like gloves boots rings amulets body armor weapon and stuff like that and this is a huge deal because it gives you a consistent source of currency in early game so if you don't get like a unique drop or something or something really valuable it makes it so that you're almost always making money so you could probably expect to make around one exalt every like two to three hours and this allows me to save up money to buy my core uniques like Perseverance, Interrogations, Last Gale Sight, Six Link Corrupted Chess, and Omniscience, right, eventually. And once we can get Omniscience, we can pretty much do the whole game. And the other goal on day one, of course, is to complete the Atlas, try to get as many of the Atlas passive skill trees points as possible, and also collect the four Void Stones. Now, I know a lot of people like to do it so that they don't actually... They actually start doing their farming method before the Void Stones, but I like to get it out of the way, get everything done first. And I don't think it should take that long, especially now that we know the Atlas better and how to optimize it better. Because the four Void Stones allow you to sextant your maps, which should be a pretty significant boost in helping you out and trying to get more currency per hour. Now, first off, we have my day one early game mapping tree, and a lot of people do ask me about Atlas mapping tree. So this Atlas tree is focused on harvests, essences, eater of world shrines, and shaping nodes for map drops. Now the reason we focus on these is pre pretty much so that these things gives us as much map sustain as possible. So you can see here we have the shaping ones, and as soon as you get enough map pool, you will drop these shaping ones. Also do essences so I can craft some of my gear, sell some imperial claws. I do block off like four or five league mechanics for the ones that I don't want to do. A lot of people have told me that heist contracts are worth a lot. So I'm going to not do the content that takes a lot of time. Like Abyss is kind of bad. Breach kind of takes a long time to do. Expedition without the expedition nodes on the tree are generally very time consuming. And Blight is pretty bad unless I really need oils and Metamorph. I could do. But basically I want to do the League mechanics that give me the most currency while making me take the least amount of time in the map, right? I think Legion could be potentially good at League Start. And I also want to do Harvest. Harvest is always good, especially if you have a tab full of items you just spam reforges on, and you can pretty much get a pretty consistent source of currency that way. So I get as much Harvest chance as possible. I do like Harbinger. You can get some Exalted Shards. You can get some Annulment Shards. And it's uh, generally pretty good for map drops. And I do know that some people say that Harbinger makes the map take too long, but it's generally not as bad as some people make it out to be. And essences, of course, are really good. Now, this node down here is something that's kind of controversial. I'm not really sure if I'll take it. And this pretty much makes it so that the, you do 25% more damage and take 25% more damage. I actually really dislike these nodes on a tree because it kind of is weird having a node on a tree that actually changes up your build pretty drastically. And lastly, as I get into higher maps, that you want to save these for a little bit later. And these are the Influence Altar nodes. Now, the Influence Altar nodes are pretty good in that they give you a lot of Eldritch currency. 
an Eater of World node is still miles better than the, what's it called, a Siri Exarch node, even though they try to buff it and nerf this one. So basically, these gives you as much Eldritch Currency as possible, and Eldritch Currency is always going to be worth a lot, especially with people trying to get Strike Gloves and people trying to get some Brittle Ground in their boots and stuff like that. So that should be high, high value. And oh yeah, and one last thing is that you want to try to rush, what's it called? You want to try to rush Stream of Consciousness as fast as possible. This pretty much just makes it you have 50% more base chance to contain extra content. And this is as long as you don't use any fragments. And because we're doing early mapping, we're pretty much never going to be using any scarabs or fragments. So this node is incredibly, incredibly strong early on. So my day two plan is, is pretty much to go into Delhi Mirror Farming. And there's also the 60% Delhi Orb Farming where you just try to put Delhi Orbs on a map, get as many Simulacrum Splinters as possible, and kill the two uh, you, the Lyrum bosses to try to get the Interrogation. Last week when I did that, I had a few times that it dropped the Interrogation. It actually ended up being like 5 to 6 Exalts every time it dropped, right? So it's pretty, pretty good strategy, and it has that jackpot potential, which is always really fun. So you might be wondering, how do you do Delimir so early on? So basically, you need to utilize the Shrine Nodes on Atlas and the goal to do Delimir, Tropical Island, or Strand. Now, the Shrine Nodes are super, super strong, and they're pretty much act like it's like a mini head on the buff, kind of. Uh, you want to buy the Delimir Sextant. The reason you want to buy the Delimir Sextant is because you want to use Domination on a map device to get more Shrines. And the more shrines that are on the map, the stronger that your character will be and the more likely that it will feel like Headhunter. And the goal will make your shrines last longer as long, in addition to the map nodes on the tree. Now for Scarabs, I generally will use Elder slash Harbinger. Now that Elder can be used with the Influence Altars. Blight is very, very important. Breach is really good and so is Abyss. So these are pretty much like the same ones that people have always used in the past. And the profit will pretty much depend on how much Simulacrums will go for and how much Delirium Orbs will sell for. I do think that no matter what, Delirium Orbs will be quite expensive and Simulacrums will always have demand, especially with the amount of Skeleton Mage players that will be trying to run them for profit. Now for the Atlas Tree, now this one is a little bit different. It's focused on trying to get as many Simulacrum Splinters as possible. It's focused on getting the additional Blight because once you get two Blights in the map, it's pretty much like 300 Splinters. And it's trying to get Alva and trying to boost how good your Alva is, right? So you want your Alva to be as good as possible. You want as many breaches as possible with Flash Breach. You want Altars, Influence Altars. You want Abyss Pack Size. And lastly, you want Shrines, right? So we pretty much take every single Shrine node on a tree. And I do block off five lead me mechanics to spawn the lead mechanics that fill the maps with more mobs. So we want to get like lead mechanics like Ritual, Breach and Abyss, and those should be very, very high value. Now, one thing to note is that you want to save all of your Alva missions for when you do this because Alva missions are really critical for getting the high number of splinters, especially when you have that node that makes all of the mobs in Alva blue. And you don't want to take this node, Valley of Darkness. This node over here, Valley of Darkness, does make it so that rare mobs have three Arch Nemesis modifiers. So you want to save this node for when you get head on her, right? And another thing you could do is that by taking these nodes, these Alva nodes over here, you can also try to sell double corrupt temples for gems or what's it called? Items. If you get like a double corrupt gem room, you can potentially try to get level 2120 Vol Lightning Strike. And that is actually insanely expensive, right? I think that gem is like 10x at the start of the league. But basically, this Atlas tree is pretty much the same as before. You have the Delirium nodes over here for as many splinters as possible. Blight chance here, some beyond spawn chance here, sextants so that you have four sextants a map. Then these are shrine nodes that give you as many shrines as possible while also increasing their effect and duration. And these are the altar nodes over here. Again, if you're if it's too crazy, you can drop Wrath of Cosmos, and this thing does make you take 25% more damage for each altar that you take. Oh, and I'm supposed to take this node, so I forgot to actually check this one. And this is the one that gives you the additional downside or something like that. But basically, should be super, super easy to get 300 splinters as long as you buy the scarabs. Even without the scarabs, it should be pretty worth it, in my opinion. Now, another question I do get a lot is, will I boss? And I will try out the bossing just 
because it's fun, right? And it's a bossing league, supposedly. But I do think a lot of the bosses, how valuable it will be will come down to the unique boss drops. Like Uber, Uber, Uber Elder and Uber, Uber, Uber Cortex do not have their boss drops known yet. Or I don't know if they are done making it. But judging by what I see for the Forbidden Flame and Flesh Jewels, the Uber versions, I don't think that any of those will be super, super expensive, right? So not really sure how farming Uber Siri Exarch or Uber Eater of Worlds will be. And another thing is it also depends on how dangerous the bosses are. It's kind of hard to know exactly how crazy they will be. And if the and if the character needs to be super, super strong, right? Because like if I'm playing Champion Lightning Strike or something like that early on, you can pretty much do all the bosses with like, two to five x worth of gear right so it's super super easy to do but if the boss of the uber version is super super strong then that's a different story and you should prioritize getting your void stones the most over doing the uber versions because the void stones do allow you to get sextants which is pretty much a multiplier on the amount of loot that you'll be getting now one thing that i do think that's going to happen is that casual bossing is going to get affected by boss fragments price for people doing the uber uber version so this might mean that if you take longer to get your void stones that the fragments might be more expensive because everyone is pricing the fragments for the uber uber loot and the additional like what's it called elevated sex that you may get from maven or something like that right so that's why I think it's kind of important to get the Void Stones out of the way as soon as possible. Now, overall, I do think that this league could be a pretty interesting. And I do think that Simulacrum is probably going to be the best profit in the game, especially with the Altars not having the Scarabs on it anymore. And uh, there be more mods on the Altars, so that's harder to get Quant and then Scarabs and dropping like 30 to 40 Scarabs a map. And I do think that playing nonstop is the best way to go. I do know Firegrass has a lot of videos about how to get a Mage Blood in three to five days. And it really just comes down to how much sleep you're willing to sacrifice. Because in the beginning, if you're far ahead and you're doing bossing at all, any of the boss drops will be multi-X and it'll be very, very expensive. For instance, when I did like Cyrus in the past, when I was getting the helmet, right? The Crown of the Inward Eye, I sold the helmet for like 2X. Because I was like one of the first people to kill Cyrus. And then literally like 12 hours later, the helmet was already down to like 10 to 20 C, right? So it's a pretty big deal to stay awake as long as possible. As cringe as that might be to say. But always keep your health in mind. And lastly, I do think it's interesting to see if bossing will be profitable for long. I do think that bossing will always be profitable. Because I do think that people will sell challenges. And the bossing services will probably be more profitable than the bossing loot. Especially with how the uh, Sentinel Challenge rewards are this time around and the, how the challenges are tied to like an MTX armor set. So a lot of people will pretty much be buying like an Uber Siri XR kill from you. Not only for the Void Stone, but also to complete their challenge and get their MTX. So I do think that bossing services will be the big money maker of this league. But I hope this has helped you, maybe guide you in your league start process. Because I do know making this video helped me out. And that you come up with a nice strategy and I hope my methodology helps you have a more enjoyable league start. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more meters, exalts, and mage bloods than me and see you next time. Bye!